Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at Morgan's first experiment with Drosophila. So what did he do in his first experiment? So he bred many generations of fruit flies spontaneously. Now as I said in case of mental also we saw that he first of all he self pollinated the pea plants for several generations. Similarly here also Morgan what he did was he started breeding these fruit flies spontaneously and he was just seeing what kind of fruit flies are being produced as a result. So normally he found that the drosophila were all red eyed. So red eye color was the common color and normally all of them were red eyed. But suddenly you saw that a single white eyed male fruit fly was seen in the culture. Where most of them were all red eyed, suddenly just a single piece of white eyed male fly was seen in the culture. And that surprised him. Then how come a white eyed fly was being produced because there was no white eyed fly before so in the parental generations there was no white eyed fly so how come this white eyed fly was being produced in the culture so this raised the question in his mind and this encouraged him to continue experimentation with drosophila so what he did was he crossed this white eyed male with a red eyed female so a normal red eyed female he crossed this white eyed male which was found the unique piece so that he crossed with a red eyed female so the parental generation here was a red eyed female crossed with a white eyed male so here you can see the red eyed female and this is the white eyed male so they were crossed with each other and what was found in the F1 generation that is the first filial generation you saw that all the flies that were being produced were red eyed. So what did this prove? This proved that the red eye color is dominant over the white eye color and this was as per the Mendelian laws. So it was quite surprising for Morgan because Morgan was also amongst those scientists who did not believe or who criticized Mendel's laws of inheritance. But when he himself found this, it was quite surprising for him that yes, the F1 generation only showed one particular trait and that trait was dominant over the other trait. Now what he did? So he allowed the F1 males and females to breed. Now in the F1 generation, the males as well as females both were being produced and they were all red eyed. So he allowed one red eyed female of F1 generation to cross with another male of the same generation. So both will be red eyed. And so a red eyed male and a red eyed female of F1 generation were crossed to give the F2 generation and what was found in the F2 generation it was found that out of four three of them were red eyed and only one was white white eyed so it, it was seen that two of them were males and two of them were females and out of all of them three of them had red eyed were red eyed and only one was white eyed so here you can see they are red eyed and this is white eyed so it was seen that the ratio of red eyed to white eyed was 3 is to 1 so the phenotypic ratio was 3 is to 1 now another important thing that he observed was that all the females of the f2 generation they were red eyed but all the males were not red eyed so 50% of the males were red eyed whereas the remaining 50% of the males were white eyed. So now he, he could conclude something with this experiment. So this experiment up till F1 generation it was like uh, on the same lines as that of Mendel's experiments. But when F2 generation came into picture since he had used male and female of the fruit flag so he used different sexes so he started doubting if there is that if the trait has some link with the sex because he saw that the females were all red eyed but the white eye color was seen only in males so this gave him that thought 
So, by end of experiment 1, Morgan could conclude that the Mendel's rules for inheritance of dominant and recessive traits could apply. Because why did he agree to Mendel's law of dominant and recessive traits? Because in the F1 generation, he himself saw that all the flies had red eyed. That means the red color was dominant over white color. And the white color being the recessive trait did not express itself. But it got expressed in the F2 generation. Right? So, this made him believe that okay, Mendel's rules for dominant and recessive traits could apply. But another thing that, strike, that struck his mind was the gene for eye color might have some connection with the sex of the fruit fly. Why did he get this doubt? Because he observed that the white eye color, which is the recessive trait, this appeared in the F2 generation only in one sex, that is only in the male sex, but it was not seen in the female sex. So he got this thought that it is possible that the white eye color is limited only to male sex. So he was not sure what exactly the relation was, but he thought maybe there is some connection between the eye color and the sex of the organism. And because of this, because of this doubt, he decided to conduct the second experiment. So what did he do in the second experiment? Here he crossed the F1 red-eyed female with a white-eyed male. So he just wanted to check if females can be produced or if females are formed with white eyes or white eye is only uh, limited to the male sex. So for that purpose he took a red-eyed female of the F1 generation and the parental white-eyed male. So this is what he took. So this was the parental generation and what was the result? He found that half of 50% of the females were red-eyed and 50% of the males were red-eyed, right? So he found that even in females, white eye was there, even in males, white eye was there and in equal proportion, like half of the females were white-eyed, again half of the males were white-eyed and both red-eye and white-eye females and males were obtained and each had a probability of 25%. So there are chances of each of them being born is 25%. So what did he conclude? He concluded that the white-eye character is not limited to the male sex but it is linked to a specific chromosome. So with this experiment, he his doubt got clear that okay, it is not that white color is associated only with the male sex. It can be present in male sex, it can be present in female sex, but he uh, concluded something else. So let us see what was Morgan's conclusion. So Morgan concluded that the gene for eye color is located on the X chromosome. So this is what he concluded and this was a very important conclusion down the line. So it was not associated with a particular sex but it was related to the sex chromosome. Now I was talking about the sex chromosome sometime back right. So I told you that for males the, the, their sex chromosome is XY. So the homologous chromosomes, one has X and the other one has Y. So during gamete formation, the male can contribute either an X or a Y. Whereas in case of females, if you look at their sex chromosomes, they have X on both the homologous chromosomes. Right? So this is how it is for male and for female. Now, according to Morgan, the gene for eye color, this is located on the X chromosome. Now, what are these? These are nothing but homologous chromosomes. Right? So this is X, this is this is also X, let us suppose in case of female and in case of male it is going to be X and let us suppose this is Y. Right? So the, uh, Morgan said that the gene for eye color is located on this X chromosome. So why did he say so and what is going to happen if this is located on the X chromosome? We all know right genes are located on a chromosome. and. As per Morgan, there was no corresponding allele present on the Y chromosome. Normally what happens in case of any pair of homologous chromosome? If you have a particular gene on this chromosome, the homologous chromosome will also have the same gene, right? But this was an exception. In case of males, they are in their sex chromosome. Whatever gene is present on the X chromosome, not necessarily the same are present on the Y chromosome. And gene for eye color in case of Drosophila was one such example. So this gene was present on the X chromosome, but the corresponding gene was missing on the Y chromosome. So the Y chromosome was not having the gene for eye color. So that was different here. Now, 
the question is how does it matter i mean what difference does it make if you do not have a corresponding gene on the y chromosome okay so let us try to understand that so based on this let us see how would a red eyed or a white eyed male or female drosophila chromosomes will look like so let us first consider a female red eyed drosophila so in case of now before that let me tell you that red eye color is dominant so and white eye color is recessive so how do we denote them for red eye color we denote them as w with a plus sign and the white is denoted as w so this plus sign is used to denote the dominant trait so this is the notation which we will be following here so if we say that a female red eyed so how do we denote that now in case of a female the x, the sex chromosomes will be xx that means the two homologous chromosomes will be two identical x chromosomes somewhat like this so this means that this drosophila has a gene for eye color on the x chromosome and this gene can be w plus and a corresponding gene will also be present on the other x chromosome and that can also be w plus that is one possibility so this is the homozygous red eye so both on both the homologous uh, chromosome you have the red the the red ally that is w plus ally or there is another possibility how it can look like it can be something like this let us suppose this is one g this is one chromosome this is the other chromosome so in this chromosome it has let us suppose w plus but on this chromosome it has w because in this case also the phenotype will be red eye because w plus is dominant over w so any of these can be the genetic arrangement for a red eye female drosophila what happens to a red eye male drosophila now as i said for a male they have one x chromosome so for a male they will have one x chromosome and the other one will be a y chromosome and this y chromosome is slightly different in shape when compared to the x chromosome so they are not identical in their appearance so x chromosome looks somewhat like this while the y chromosome is a little j shaped and it is shorter than the x chromosome right so on the x chromosome we say this is red eye that means on this x chromosome it has to have w plus why w plus because the y chromosome is not going to carry anything so there is no possibility that the x can have w and still it can be red eye that is not possible because whether the male drosophila will be red eyed or white eyed that completely depends on the x chromosome because the gene for eye color is exclusively located on the x chromosome and the y chromosome doesn't play a role in that case now similarly if i talk about a female white eyed drosophila so a female white eyed drosophila so for female again you will have two x chromosomes right x and x so if it is white eyed so in that case it means that the gene for eye color located on both the chromosomes are w because even if in one of them it is w plus it is going to be red eyed so if it is white eyed it has to be w in both of them so that is the scenario for female white eyed drosophila what about a male white eyed drosophila so for a male white eyed drosophila everything depends on the x chromosome so in the x chromosome it has to have w because the y chromosome anyways is not going to carry anything so this is how the male and female red and white eyed drosophila's chromosomal arrangement will be so what do we observe here so we observe here that the gene for eye color in case of drosophila is located or it is linked to the x chromosome exclusively so what does that mean this means that the males are pure for the eye color gene what do you mean by pure it means that in case of males it completely depends on which type of allele do they have on the x chromosome because the y chromosome doesn't have any role so the males can never be heterozygous in this case so if a male is white eyed that means it has the white eye color on the x gene because x gene is the only one which is contributing similarly if the males are red eyed that means the x chromosome has the red color but in case of females that is not the case females can have a red color or a white color in any of the x chromosome so they can be red eyed they can be homozygous or they can be heterozygous so here you can see they are heterozygous 
because both the alleles are different but here they are homozygous because both the alleles are the same so in females you can have a homozygous redite you can also have a heterozygous redite so females may be homozygous or heterozygous for eye color but in case of males that is not the case i mean there is no question of homozygous or heterozygous in case of males for this particular gene because for this gene there is no corresponding gene present on the y chromosome and the y chromosome and x chromosome here they are the homologous chromosome so basically this is an exception and these exceptions occur only for the traits whose genes are located on the x chromosome because other than this x and y chromosome other than this uh, all the other chromosomes are the autosomes for example if you talk about drosophila so drosophila as i said they have four pairs of homologous chromosomes right so out of these four pairs of homologous chromosomes the three pairs are autosomes that means the three pairs in these three pairs they are the two are exactly identical to each other so the only exception is in the last pair which is the sex chromosome and in this sex chromosome also in case of females they are identical to each other so only in males this is an exception so for the genes which are located exclusively on the x chromosome so for those particular gene uh, they, this exception will be seen that the males will be pure for those particular gene but the females can be homozygous or heterozygous Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.